I've been receiving a lot of requests for this problem, and I think it's an interesting one. It can be solved by looking for a bijection. A bijection is just a one-to-one -one correspondence between the things that you're trying to count and something that might be easier to count. This suggests, this problem suggests a correspondence between the number of all possible colorings and binary numbers. The reason you might see this is um, that each section can be colored either red or blue. So we have two choices for each section of our spinner. And we can think of each of these sections as a digit in a seven digit binary number. And we can arbitrarily say that zero corresponds to a blue section and a one digit corresponds to a red section. So let's take a look at the simplest example. Maybe all the sections are blue. That corresponds to a binary number of zero in base two, and this corresponds to all blue. Okay. So that's one coloring. Easy to see that match. Let's take a look at colorings where we have one red and the rest blue. So for example, in base 10, that would have one here. It looks like this in base two. That corresponds to something like this. Let's take a look at what happens with two in base 10, which is this in binary. There's our um, red moved over one digit. And we see that this represents, if this is sort of, if all of these seven digits represent our circular spinner, we can see that this represents a rotation of our spinner. So the one red is in a different place, but it's an equivalent coloring according to what we want from the problem. And this repeats itself until the red is in uh, the um, leftmost digit. So that would correspond to, say, 64 in base 10. One is here, and the rest of the digits are zero. We see that there are um, seven binary numbers that correspond to one valid coloring. That is a coloring that's the same um, without any rotation. So no rotations allowed. Let's just take a look at a second example before we generalize. Let's have um, two reds adjacent to each other. So we'll count the number of ways that we can have two reds adjacent to each other. This occurs for three, which corresponds to binary. And the next one, if we shift it over, that's six in base 10, four and two, like that. And if we go to 96 in base 10, that's 64 and 32. And then we have to, you know, these binary numbers correspond to a rotation. So we rotate around like this. And so if we look at in base 10, 65, that corresponds to a one here, five blues and a one here. This is red like that. And right, and if you count these through, this represents seven equivalent binary numbers or they seven binary numbers that are equivalent to one valid coloring because we don't allow rotations. And we can see that for every, um, every possible coloring, corresponds to seven different binary numbers. So what I, except for, except for the, the nullable blue section is when they're all blue and when they're all red. So what I'd like to do is take the number of binary numbers from zero to um, the largest seven digit binary number. And then I'm going to subtract out these two um, numbers that are all blue and all red, or these colorings that are all blue and all red. And then I'm going to take the remaining ones, divide by seven, and add those two back in. So let's see what that looks like. So first, I'm going to count the number of binaries um, from zero to um, the largest seven-digit binary number. Um, this this seven-digit bin binary number is just one less than the um, smallest eight-digit binary number. 
boy, that's large. So minus one gives you the, the seven digit binary number. This is um, two to the seventh minus one, but um, we're also including zero. So I'm gonna add that one back in. So 127 plus one, which is this guy is equal to 128. Now I'm gonna take my 128 and I'm going to subtract two yet again. I'm subtracting two because um, the colorings that are either all red or all blue. So all red is um, in binary and all blue is in binary. Those are only going to occur once when we count our binary numbers. So we don't have to divide by seven for these two colorings. That leaves us with 126. We know we're on the tra right track because 126 is, in fact, a multiple of 7. So when I divide by 7, I get 18. And then I need to add back in my all red and all blue colorings. So 18 plus 2, adding these back in, is equal to 20, and that's our answer.